So here's a question for you guys. Have you thought about slamming your stem? Now, slamming the stem basically means reducing the height of the stem on the bars so that your effective height of the bars above the ground is minimized. You're going to reduce the spaces between the stem and the headset so there's effectively minimum gap there. Now, we know that's not the only factor controlling aerodynamics. There's lots of factors that control aerodynamics, but it is one important factor. And we've been asked recently, what is the effect of slamming the stem on the aerodynamics of the rider? That's quite a tricky question to answer because it depends on the actual rider, the position they adopt on the bike, albeit within the same geometry, and also the environmental conditions, their native speed, etc., etc. However, Thinking about this more, we do think we can come up with some, let's say, back of the envelope calculations that will inform the average rider what benefit you're going to get by slamming your stem. Now, that's not to say everyone should automatically go out and remove all the spaces from their headset. That is crazy because you've got to adapt to the position that you're most comfortable on the bike. Ultimately, if you cannot sustain a position, even if it's super aero, that's not going to be good for you. And if you're going to get, you know, back problems or leg problems or the hip angle is too acute, etc., etc., you know, there's going to be a problem with that chosen geometry. That said, most people probably accept the way the bike comes from the bike shop. And it's extremely simple. Take the stem off the steerer column and take out those spaces or replace them with the number that you need and refix it. Don't do what I did, by the way, which is do half the job, take the screws out, forget that you've taken the screws out, and then try and ride the bike with an entirely loose stem. That is a recipe for disaster for sure. So what we've done here, Fast Fitness Tips, as usual, we try to get some more information on what it means to slam the stem, and what it means to reduce the effective height of the handlebars. Now, a lot of people have actually done wind tunnel tests with their, you know, stack height measured, with their stem spaces measured, with their stem angle measured. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We've looked at all that data, all the data that is in the public domain. What we've also done is gone into the studio and gone into the lab and measured the effective stem height. Now there's a really easy way to do this for yourself. You can just take a tape measure and measure the distance from the floor to your bars. That will give you a rough ballpark figure of how aerodynamic the front of your bike is. Now I say again, that doesn't necessarily imply you're riding that bike aerodynamically, but what we can do is we can compare the same rider making changes on their bike so that we can say what's the effect of, let's say, taking out three centimeters, five centimeters of effective bar height above the ground. Also, remember that a lot of bikes, you know, and I was in this position myself with the giant Vance Pro, uh, come with a very high stack height these days. So you may want to, to reduce the stem height and the effective bar height to make it more like a conventional road bike. And we know a lot of stems are sold now with a minus not just six degree angle, not just nine degree angle, but sometimes minus 17, minus 25, and even above. The stems can be flipped, you know, some, sometimes they're designed to have a big steep positive height, but you can flip the stem and make it a big negative dip. In this series of photos here, I've just got on the bike with an accurate tape measure and done a number of setups with the stem non-slammed, then slammed, then with a normal stem, then a minus 17 degree stem to see what gain we get in centimeters when we start adjusting the bike. Um, we can measure that obviously on the, on the top of the bars, on the hoods, for example, we can measure it on the drops as well. It's very interesting that the distance between the top bars and the drops for typical road bars is around about 13 centimeters. For a compact bar, it might be 11 or 12 centimeters, but it's around that ballpark. And it turns out that if you have a very unslammed, very non-aero stem, and you convert it to a fully slammed, fully negative, let's say minus 25 long nose stem, you can actually take out around about 13 centimeters from your front end. 
So effectively, what you're doing there is think about it. You're converting your riding position, you know, when you're on the top of the bars to what effectively was on the drops before you optimize that front end. And that's been proven in the wind tunnel here by John Cobb, who actually measured the CDA and drag in various positions, slammed, non-slammed, on the hoods, on the drops. And he found exactly what I'm saying, that the fully optimized front end with the slammed drop negative degree, non-flipped, i.e. downward angle, was almost exactly the same as the fully unoptimized positive stem riding on the drops. So what he found was the aero drag riding on the drops was exactly the same uh, drag as you get riding on the tops when you fully optimize the front end, i.e. you have the negative stem fully slammed, which I think is very, very interesting. But that's the, that's the data for him, for his personal setup. Can we go further? Can we go further here and actually create some kind of calculator? Now I have to say, you can't actually create a fully personalized calculator with only crude information that we've got to hand here because your drag is heavily dependent on obviously your body, your clothing, you know, your actual position and lastly your bike, your wheels, etc. You know, we know all that, yeah? But think about it like this. If you are the same rider in the same clothes on the same bike and you make a small change in your front end, i.e. you take out the spacer height, i.e. you slam the stem, or you can put on a more acutely negative degree, you know, long stem, you can reach down further. So you take out centimeters from the front end. We can extrapolate between the same rider doing those two things. And it turns out that although the figures are not totally robust, they are good enough to give us a ballpark calculator. And this is what I'm gonna to present to you guys now. So this calculator is a rough and ready calculator. So don't shoot me down if it's not wholly accurate for you, but it's giving you a ballpark figure of the savings you might get. And the clever thing is, it starts with your current position. So what you do is you start with your stem length and your current drop angle. So let's say I've got a nine centimeter stem with a drop angle of, you know, let's say also, you know, five degrees. Then it'll work out, you know, basic trigonometry here, that the actual mathematical drop from a fully flat neutral position is less than a centimeter. It's about, you know, 0.8 of a centimeter there. Remember, the stem length in this case is only nine centimeters long. Now then if we go and purchase a new stem, you know, a longer one, let's say an 11 centimeter stem, and we put on a steep drop angle, let's say a 17, well, that's gonna drop us down by 3.22 centimeters, which is a gain of 2.43 based on our neutral position. Now, based on completely zero, obviously we could put in zero here if we wanted to see what it's like compared to completely, you know, zero position. But let's go back to the nine centimeter stem at a minus five compared to an 11 centimeter at a minus 17. We've gained 2.43. Now let's take out three centimeters, which actually very typical of your stack height from the upper steerer, you know, from those um, spaces. Obviously you put them above the stem, tighten everything up. And now we've got a total gain of 5.43 centimeters. Now if I'm a rider that averages, let's say 30 kph, your average riding speed, then I calculate based on the wind tunnel data that I've looked at from various riders, that your watt gain from that decrease, from that 5.43 decrease, 5.4 centimeter decrease is around about eight watts. And I also calculate that your seconds over 40 kilometers would be with reference to your 30 kph time, in other words, how many seconds do you gain? I calculate that you gain about 63 seconds with that difference, which would be around about a 1% overall gain, which is not too bad. But let's do something even more aggressive. Let's say you put on 11 with a minus 25. You know, you managed to take out 4 cm, and then you're talking about nearly 8 centimeters. And let's say your riding speed is more like 40 kph then your watt gain I calculate there would be around 22 watts and your seconds gain would be nearly 80 seconds and we're talking about around about a 2% gain. Now I'll say again, these are not individualized exact data to you. You know, I haven't worked out your frontal area. 
I haven't got your wind tunnel data personalized, you know, exactly on, on spec. But I'm, what I am doing is using yourself as a reference, like an unknown known, you know, a fixed variable that's not going to really change except in one parameter, which is the effective front height of the bars from the ground. Now, clearly, if your position changes a lot, you know, for example, you've got massive extra reach with the stem, that's going to make a slight alteration. So I'm not claiming ultra high accuracy of this calculator. But what I'm saying is this is a useful ballpark calculator to find out what is the benefit of slamming the stem? What is the benefit of putting a negative drop on that stem? And it's reference to your natural, you know, with reference to your base speed. So I hope that's useful, guys. That is some science of slamming the stem rather than just guesswork. I want to give a shout out to my Patreon viewers because you guys have been supporting me. I haven't put out as much content recently. I've been very busy doing other tasks, other, other jobs, if you like. So I want to give a special shout out to the Patreon viewers. Your continued support enables me to make videos like this from time to time. Okay guys, so let's wrap up. So what I'm saying today is there is a bit more science out there on slamming your stem and putting a negative drop on that front end than you first realize. I'm not suggesting it for everyone. If it makes you uncomfortable, then obviously don't do it. If it's unsafe for you, don't do it. And if you do want to make a big change, do it incrementally, you know, take out one centimeter for a few weeks and take out another centimeter of stack height. Uh, I, think this is a, I think this is a worthwhile change, however, for a lot of people who don't look at the setup they get from the bike store. You know, they often come with a big stack height and a lot of spaces in there. So it's an easy change to make. And to be honest, it's one that you can make pretty much for free. All right, guys, as always, stay safe out there. Have a great ride. Check out our Patreon site. And uh, and as always, thanks for viewing Fast Fitness Tips.